Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody doing? Hey, how you doing tonight? Excellent. How you feeling, Don? I am like, I feel like a million percent. I, in actuality, I'm probably at like 80%. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was feeling so bad <laughs> Thursday, Friday. Well, actually, like all last week, but Thursday and Friday were really bad. Um, Did you have the Rona? No, uh, there's a really bad sinus infection going around. It started in my chest and moved up to my head. Uh, oh, just worse. when I thought I got rid of the chest part, like that day, it moved to my face. <laughs> it was like um, the most pressure I've ever had in my head in my entire life. It was wow, unbearable. <laughs> Pretty crazy. But uh, what ended up happening was my sister's like, let me bring you some um, uh, Dayquil. Is Dayquil um, severe? And I've never taken this stuff before. And I was like, whatever, just bring me whatever. <laughs> and I and I took it. And this is Friday afternoon. And within two hours, my head start like the pain went away in my head. And just that was enough for me to at least be able to think. Um, and then Saturday was a little bit better. Um, and then Sunday, I felt back to like 70, 80 percent. I still have quite a bit of stuff, but I just feel I'm just so grateful to be out of the head, like head pain. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank you. good, man. Glad yeah. you're feeling better. Thank you. Uh, I hope nobody else. Uh, get, well, Jonathan, now you're sick, right? We're passing it around through, through Zoom. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the uh, the head pressure stage, like you just described, bro. Um, I've been living off Dayquil, Nyquil, and uh, same thing started in the chest, and then my voice has just been a little off. And um, yeah, I'm definitely this is probably like the first. I feel slightly better today, but I was been like bedridden like the last two days. Ah, uh, that's rough. That is rough. You'll you'll be you'll be there soon. I'm on the up, bro. I'm on the up. Good, good. That's that's awesome. Backpack Mike in the house. How you doing today, sir? I am doing awesome. Good. How are you, Don? Wonderful. Jason Marshall. Good to see you. Nice oh. sweater. I'm back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I like that, Mike. Paul is in the house. You got a. I heard you got a close coming up soon in uh, Southern California. Oh Spanish. yeah, on Wednesday. on Wednesday. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, awesome. Yeah. Good work. Sorry, I couldn't do that one with you. <laughs> no worries. We got the next one coming up. <laughs> so. No Spanish for me. <laughs> GP looking good. Steve Griffin, Eli, the uh, the underdog the lion the newbie comes out blazing crushing crushing appointment setting uh, i do what i can with what i got one day we'll see your face one day we will see your face <laughs> and then we got iphone jim i'm curious because i call on you to turn your mic on or your video on every time i see you uh do you have a mic? Do you have, are you on your iPhone? <laughs> Can you unmute yourself or uh, unvideo yourself? Oh, you had it for a second. I'm here. Thank you. There we go. Where are you from, Jim? Uh, originally from New Jersey. Uh, now I live in Virginia City, Nevada. Nice. What's your last name? Harrington. Oh, you're Jim Harrington. Okay. Cool, cool. And you live, you live in Virginia City. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, it's uh, yesterday was seventy three degrees, and today we had snow, which is typical for April. And uh, you know, I used to live in uh, Truckee, California, uh, from out from New Jersey. But yeah, it's it's nice out here. I have a small business, and it's uh, nice. Nice. Okay. Well, we had a killer week. We had a, um, a record, uh, 
we had a record number of appointments on Thursday uh, with, I think we had 12. Um, and I was super excited about that, that um, we're continuously breaking records. And then Friday broke it again with 13. So huge congratulations. You guys are killing it. <clears throat> Getting a lot of appointments set. Um, I know you guys are learning a lot as you go. Um, it's been amazing uh, to see your transition and your growth. Um, a lot of you starting from never have been setting appointments in your life, um, never been in solar um, and learning solar and setting appointments at the same time from scratch to like 30 days in booking a bunch of appointments um, and just getting everything rolling. Such a great skill set to have. Um, when I started in this industry, knocking doors like actual physical doors. Um, I always said that anybody that I work with that I train in sales, I want them to start on the doors because you just learn so much that way. You learn it so fast. Um, and the doors was the fastest way to, that you could possibly learn all this stuff. <clears throat> with what we have here, it's like doors on crack. <laughs> it's like such a much faster rapid pace learning curve uh, that you just your first day you go through like a week of knocking doors um, so uh, I, I understand why you guys can have such rapid pace but also your dedication to um, your dedication to growing and learning and understanding everything more um, along with your gratitude for what you know, the model and the system and everything that GP and I and Jeff pour into you, that gratitude is the other piece of the puzzle that gets you uh, those victories and helps you grow at the rate that you're growing. So it's, it's a mixture of your fortitude and your um, dedication and your uh, effort, your work ethic mixed with that gratitude. It takes both of those things to uh, grow at the rate that you're growing. So kudos to you for both of those things. Um, you guys are killing it. So well done. Well done. Very proud and excited for you guys. Um, trying to think we were going to do a, did, yeah, we were going to do a, a quick training with Jonathan, but he is sick and under the weather and his voice doesn't sound pretty. So we don't want to record that. <laughs> no, I just want to give him a break today. <clears throat> uh, but we have, I don't know, GP, if you prepped Mike, but, um, Mike has been a freaking stud uh, doing some, I don't want to say unique, but um, his approach has been creating a lot of great results uh, because it's one thing to book a ton of appointments. You can book a ton of appointments. It's another to book a ton of appointments that show up. Um, and then it's another to have appointments that show up that are there to learn and they want their they're eager to gather the information that you're um, about to give them. So uh, you can book a million appointments and you could have, you know, 70% of them no show. And then the ones that do show, you'd be like, what do you want? Get, can we get this done with? You know, there's, there's a large range. There's, there's a wide spectrum that we have here. So um, Mike, you are doing really, really well at this. Um, I want to kick it over to GP to, um, jump into anything you want to uh, add or throw out there or, you know, your thoughts on our process and everything. And then I know uh, hopefully you prepped Mike. If, if not, Mike, you're prepped now that um, GP is going to be asking you. He kind of did, but not, it was like 10 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Cool. Cool. So over to you, GP. So I want to start off by saying that when Mike first started, he was booking no appointments. Like what, what was it like two weeks with goose eggs? It was three weeks and I was about to lose my mind. And you guys were having to like, give me pep talks, each phone, each like uh, block. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? And I didn't know a clue. What I, I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but, but yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. But yeah. And, and now we're going to, he has the single day booking record. Um, his appointments are showing up at a really high rate. And like, I, I know I have, I think three that were, that I'm working with you. Uh, that are pretty solid. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yeah. Jeff probably has some too. <clears throat> so we, we have a lot of stuff we're working in. This is all, you know, you're doing how many call blocks a week? Two or three? 
Yeah, two or three. And then I start. Yeah. And then I now I just try to do it whenever I can. So, I mean, I'm trying to do five if I can, but but no, probably four, I'd say three or four, probably. Uh Which is crazy because, you know, these are two hour call blocks. So if we're able to get, you know, Mike to the point where he's getting one sale a week, that means he's going to be making like three thousand dollars every eight, eight to ten hours of work, which is pretty good, you know. And that's starting out, right? This this is his, what third month in solar. Yeah, some, well, I mean, yeah, basically, but I've really actually tried, yeah. So it's crazy. It's impressive. Um, and and what I wanted you to go over with everybody is what you're doing in between booking the appointment and the appointment sitting, because your appointments are showing up, expecting an appointment, happy to get the numbers, right? Because we have some that are showing up. And they're like, email me the quote. I don't want to talk to you. You know, and there's, there's nothing we can do. I mean, sure, we can email a quote, but that's never going to go anywhere. If that's their expectation uh, is that we're going to just email them a quote, right? So it's, it's not just about them expecting to get numbers. It's expecting what's, what's actually going to come, which is us sitting down with them, trying to get on a Zoom, showing them numbers, actually talking to them. So if you can just do, you know, five or 10 minutes, Michael, of what you're doing and, uh, so, yeah. So one thing, I mean, so I kind of, li- I watched your guys' pitch and everything. Um, or I like went through the whole pitch, everything you guys normally told us to do. Um, but one thing I noticed is I started just expecting that they've already talked to someone about solar. And then that means, uh, and that, I mean, let me try to, hold on. Let me try to make some sense. So I expect like they've already talked to someone about solar. And the majority of the time, the people that I've gotten were people who are waiting on another proposal from someone else. And I always go into, I'm like, Hey, well, you know, if you want to go buy a car, then you probably want to get two different proposals for cars, you know, or something like that. And they're always like, yeah, you're right. You know, or, um, and that's one approach I was used. Um, and then towards the end of the call, what's up? Oh, and then towards the end of the call, I always quadruple check with them. And I say like, well, I say what I'm doing here, is I'm just setting this appointment so I can get you a quote so then you can see how much money you can save. I'm pretty basic. Like, I don't know why these people are like choosing me or choosing my phone call to want to talk more, honestly. Like when you said that, I was kind of shocked. But um, but I think it's just, I'm just trying to become more personal with them and not just like make it, hey, I'm just trying to get them solar. Like I'll ask them about their last name. And like uh, this Hungarian guy I was like, hey, what's your last name mean? You know, and he's like, oh, I'm Hungarian. And we started, we were even talking about solar. So a lot of times I'm not even talking to them about solar. That, I think that's the biggest thing. Like I talked to a guy who was an amputee and he started talk, going off about his legs, just this whole situation. And then I, we finally got back to solar. And so, and then even though he didn't want solar, he still showed up and he still talked to me and told me he wasn't going to be there. You know, and so I think it's just about building that relationship instead of just, I mean, I guess the other day I was trying to destroy everyone with numbers. I was trying to get high numbers, but I think it's not just trying to focus on the numbers, but trying to get to know them and see what the problem is. If, and if they don't want it, then go to the next, whatever. So, I mean, I don't know what the secret is. I think it's just trying to get to know them. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. I love it. Um, and in between, you, you mentioned that you're still kind of keeping in communication with them too, between setting the appointment and sitting it. Right. See, I don't, I don't, honestly. I mean, you guys have your automatic thing that's going. And, but here's one thing I do do. I, I do do, I wait for them on the phone. Um, and I say, you're going to get a text or an email right now. And you guys told us to do that. And so I do that for sure. Every time I say, do you get it? And then I'm like, is this a landline? And a lot of times I mess that up too. Like where I'm, uh, it's an older lady and it's a landline. And then I can't get a hold of them, which is a big mistake on my part. You know, and I probably messed up a bunch of little appointments because of that. But, but yeah, I think just reassuring with them hey we're gonna you know give you this quote but obviously you got to show up and and one thing i try to do too is when uh, jeff was talking about one of the meetings he's like if there's someone who's already getting a proposal i try to go after them you know so i can uh give them the second proposal instead of being that first person so cool good stuff um yeah i mean that's the biggest thing like I, i think we're getting to this point where we're booking a lot of appointments now right? In every block, we're seeing a ton of appointments getting booked. And, you know, when, when you kind of look at the, the metrics on a sales cycle, you know, step one is how many appointments are getting booked, 
right? Step two is how many appointments are sitting. And when you get like small percentages up on kind of all of these things along the way, you know, the, the end result is going to be a lot more sales for everybody. Um, so we really want to focus on every piece of this. It's not just kind of that front loading it and focusing on that, that big number that everybody's seeing, which is how many appointments are we booking, right? It's also, you know, how are the quality of these appointments and um, are we doing all of the proper things, especially that wrap up we talked about at the end and making sure they get that text. Um, so that they actually show up. So is that making sense for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys. Um, I wanted to pop in for a second because that's outstanding. You know, I, I was sick for a few weeks and I'm still got a little rough voice here, but you know, I want to get back into it this week. I've seen a lot of excitement on the, uh, on the, um, the WhatsApp, you know, on, on all these appointments being booked and Michael, you're doing a great job. Um, so I just wanted to say congrats on that, you know, and, and I want to get back into it and, and see if I can get some numbers back up there with you guys too. So I'm um, looking forward to coming back this week and seeing if we can, you know, hit some home runs. But, but to that point, Michael, you're doing such a great job. We we're just talking about you. So what, what's your, what's your opening line? I mean, obviously you're building trust with people and everything else. You know, what do you, what are you saying when they first answer, like getting past that first step? So I try to work at my pace. That's what they told us to do a lot. Um, I don't say the full address whenever I talk to them because um, I feel like the less words, the better. So I basically say, hey, uh, hey, Jason. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, who's this? I'm like, hey, my name is Mike. I'm just giving you a call because it looks like you talked to someone a few months ago about putting solar on your home over at Ivory Street. And they'll either say, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Or if they say, or if they say, no, I never did, I say, oh, well, then you're talking to me. I'm the guy, you know, and then they're like, what? They're all confused. That doesn't work all the time. But, um, or if they get all mad at me, then I kind of just start joking with them. I'm like, oh, well, we could just be friends then. And then they start talking to me more about whatever. And then sometimes that goes into something. It's, it's, it, I do all sorts of things, but I make that first line super basic because they don't want to talk to you already. So I just say, What's your, I don't give them the address that I say the street and I make it basic. Like they already talked to someone and I'm following up. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. And then just going on and being a nice guy and just flowing with the conversation. Right. I mean, sound very natural. Yeah. Cause I feel, cause I feel like a lot of times, like, um, and maybe this works for some people, I don't know, but if I'm going on, I'm trying to trick them. And I mean, I kind of, am trying to trick them, but if I'm trying to give them so much info at the start about, uh, maybe California is about the price is about to go up all this type of stuff. It's like, yes, they, they kind of know that you can talk about that later on. I mean, I, I don't, I kind of wait till the end, right. Say I'll talk about it on the appointment call, but I just try to be super basic. Here's the talk about solar. You already talked to someone. Or do you want to talk more? If they don't on to the next, we don't have time for it. Cool, man. Thanks. And we're, we're noticing a trend that people that are booking a lot of appointments, they're sticking to the intro. That, that Michael just said, right? Which is, you know, that the, hey, this is Mike. I'm just calling. Looks like you looked at solar a couple months back. You know, are you still at this address, right? They're getting a yes early. Okay, are your bills still above $100? Yes, they're getting their second yeses. They're, they're going straight to that. Um, and that's engaging people. And Eli, actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to work with you a little bit more on some of the other stuff, but you maybe have the best intro I, I've heard right out of the gates out of anybody you know, and you're booking a ton of appointments and having a lot of success with it because that's really what it's about. It's about getting past that first 20, 30 seconds with them on the phone. Um, it's the pacing, it's the tone, it's all that. Uh, so we're, we're really starting to see how important the intro is. And it's like 70% of the whole thing is the intro. So. Thanks, awesome, I mean, Jonathan, just, you had, oh, go ahead. Just, just um training session right here just this little um zoom here <laughs> i've already observed about four different things that i can start doing differently uh starting tomorrow um so just this this training session here was uh uh very informative <laughs> just letting you know so i'll start and doing it. some different things I'm gonna work um uh just based on like what um what's uh, the gentleman here before me uh What's the name that just spoke? Um, Michael, Jason. Michael, Michael, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna mix it around. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna explore and uh, see how things work out. But I think I think I 
I'm caught on to something different just based on this Zoom call. So thanks. Awesome. That's great feedback. Um, Jonathan, you had your hand up. Did you uh, have a question? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to chime in just for a sec. Um, kind of what Michael said, bro, I think keeping it simple and being different, you know, have, have some fun with it. You know, I, I think it's important when you're, when you're calling these folks to, Hey, you know, I'm just giving you a call back. So it does kind of feel like they've spoken with somebody before, but hit them with something different. Tell them, be like, yeah, I'm calling you guys back about the net metering program. Have you guys heard about that? And they're going to be like, what, what the hell's that? Yeah. You know, they just switched out your guys' meters a while ago. Now, you know, they're all digital. Do you guys know what that does? And tell them, you know, tracks your guys' time usage. They can triple, you know, double charge you during certain times. It also sends power back to the grid. Like, have you guys know anything about this? Like, try to, try to throw something at them that they maybe haven't heard before and keep it short. And that's, and I think those intro lines, and I would love to hear some of Eli's cause I'm, I mean, I, I know he's had some really good success but it's really within that like 10 to 15 seconds is the fame of that call and just getting them hooked. But yeah, I just wanted to say, I just agree a hundred percent what like with that, like we can always be creative and kind of work together on some new hooks like that. And I think that's important. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Uh, Brett, you had a question or a comment or a statement? <laughs> it, it just looked kind of fun to uh, raise the hand. No, I, d I did want to chime in. Um, first of all, I mean, the gold that people are sharing tonight is just phenomenal. And, and you just hear like all these different angles that people are coming at it. So yeah, just making it your own. I, the, the tip that I'll just share with, with Eli is that um, you just don't, you can try different things and obviously there's getting, you're getting great nuggets right now, uh, but don't, don't change if, if it's not broken, you don't have to fix it. So if you exactly. Really, exactly. You really, I, it's, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about it. Yeah. If it, if it doesn't help increase numbers, then yeah. Revert to like what goes, but like, no, and I was thinking about that as, as, after I said all that, I was like, wait a minute. So I'm glad you touched up on that. Well, <laughs> if it's really broken, don't fix really it. Opening I'm, I'm aware of that. Look, you know, maybe work on some other stuff, right? That maybe needs to be fixed. But if you got the opening line, that's like, like, uh, oh. you know, that, like we're saying, it's like 70%. Because I, yeah, I've, sounds... I've tried many different things on the fly and then I ended up coming back. And then I try something else and I come back. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't fix it if it's not broken. And Brett, what Brett just said, y'all, uh, actually is a thing. It actually, what he's saying is right. <laughs> yeah, and since everybody wants to hear Eli's, I'm going to put you on the spot, Eli. We're going to play one of your recordings. Oh. And, and I'm going to preface it by saying, me and Don, at one point, we had a, a call center that we outsourced. And we couldn't figure out how these guys were booking appointments. And we heard the recordings. And it was, it was this very, like, assumptive style of, you know, do, do you still live at that address? Are, you bill, are your bills still this? And people, weirdly enough, they, they just answer questions that are thrown at them. See, this is why I answer no questions, you know? Because I'll be blushing and stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to play this real quick so you guys can hear the intro. Hello? Uh -oh. Hello? Hello? Yes, hi, is this Bill? Yeah. Bill, this is Eli following up with you because uh, you spoke to one of our consultants a few months back regarding a solar savings report that we weren't actually able to get out to you. You're still at 2540 Franklin Canyon Road, correct? Yes. Are you still paying over 75 bucks a month on the electricity? Yes, but we have two solar systems. See, it, and like, it, it's so simple, right? Like there's, there's nothing going on here that, that like, you guys couldn't all learn to do his tone, his pace. Like that's really good. And that, that's not for him. It's natural. It looks like, uh, and maybe that's the things that some of you guys have to work on, but you guys can all follow that exact script, right? It's pretty easy to do that. Um, and that's what he's been doing. I, I went and listened to all his calls and it's, it's the same thing every single time. What I want to throw in there that um, what it, what it sounds like, um, from my perspective, if, if I was on the other side of that call, is it sounds like this person is very confident in what he's talking about, right? 
so I hear a lot of people, um, they, they kind of, um, they don't memorize anything. They just leave it to reading the script and they never memorize it. They just always look at the script and read the script every single time for months. It, it, it might take like two nights of repeating this over and over again to memorize it hundred percent. And then you can deliver it with confidence the way that you want to project it into that person. Right. So that's a huge difference too. And that's what I hear in all the successful people is they're delivering this with confidence. They're not reading it. You know, it's, it's pretty clear that he's not reading a script. He memorized it. He put the time in probably early on. I'm, I'm just guessing here, but I'm guessing he put the time in to memorize what he wanted to say, exactly he, how he wanted to say it. And now he can operate and throw little different <laughs> things in there when he wants to versus reading a script and maybe fumbling it a little bit or coming with lack of confidence. So that all transfers. To actually, Brett, Brett will tell you the first time I actually read that script was the day before I started work. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, did you memorize it? Do you still read it? Um, no, I memorized it. I mean, what is there to memorize really? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Listen to that confidence. <laughs> and he does the same thing. L listen to another one. It literally sounds identical. It's almost uncanny. Like his, his tone, his face is the exact same words. I'm going to play another one for you guys. Hello. Yes, uh, in the With him, I'm out. Yes, uh, this is Eli. Um, just giving you a call back. It seems that you spoke to one of our solar consultants a few months ago regarding a solar savings report. But we weren't actually able to get it out to you over at 1295 Red Gear Road in Walnut Creek. Is that the address? What's, what's the company you with? Uh, American Home Solutions. And are you, you know, just to make sure that this is even going to be worth um, the steal, your while, are you still paying over 75 bucks a month on the gas? I mean, the electricity bill. Yes. See, he flipped it on him. He's like, I just want to make sure you qualify first before we continue this conversation. Are your electric bills high enough? Right? Like that, I, I'm assuming you've done this before, Eli, but those are the things that, that you guys take that, use it, pay attention to it. It's like little psychological tricks that you can kind of flip on people and that's how you're going to book appointments. That's, that's the truth, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> So the other thing the other thing he did there was um the guy put a wall up and eli didn't like stop at the wall he did two things at the same time he just ran through the wall and then flipped it did a little psychological thing where made this person need to qualify to be a part of this conversation still he did both of those things at the same time uh the the, the most important piece of that the priority in that is pushing through that wall just just run right over what he just said and keep going to the next um, qualifying question, right? Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. But that again, goes back to confidence. If, you, if you're if you not confident in what you're delivering, you fumble, like they come up with that objection or whatever um, and you step back, right? You cower back away from the conversation. Um, a confident person plows through and keeps going, gets to their objective, right? It's awesome. Um, so I have, oh, GP, did you have another thing you want to share? Oh, Sorry. you're on mute. I was just going to play one of Michael's. So I'm okay, going to play perfect. one of Michael's pieces so you guys can hear. Hello, Cheryl. Yes, it is. Hi, Cheryl. My name is Michael. Uh, I'm giving you a call. So it looks Hi, like you. Uh, it looks like, how are you doing today? Pretty good? Good. Yeah, good. Awesome. Um, I'll give you a call if it looks like you, you talked to someone a few months ago about putting solar on your home at Farmington Drive. Yeah. Did you ever have anybody come with um, your roof or anything, or how far along did you get along in the process? No, we've got the new roof and um, everything done, and we have an appointment that someone's coming on Friday. Okay. Um, you, tomorrow no. to give us an estimate. Okay. Do you know what do you know which company that's with? I'm just curious. Um, I don't know what company it's with. It's someone that was at Costco that my husband talked to. It's probably Sunrun. That's my guess. I think Sunrun's at uh, okay. Costco usually. 
Um, well, okay. Well, would there be any? So, it looks, sounds like you're already you're already in the market. You're looking at everything. I mean, would that be okay if I gave you a call another day and we can kind of see if we can compare it to them at all or even be competitive with them? Absolutely. Okay. Let me just grab some info really quick. I won't take a lot of your time up. See it, Cheryl. Yeah. That's a unique and unique way to get selling it. I've actually never seen it spelled that way. S H E R Y L. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people go, surely? Like, <laughs> no, not, not quite. Like, don't want to mess with know how women are in their names. They are very, they'll, they'll kill you, basically. Uh, okay, and then, and then, I don't care yeah. about my name. It's the age. <laughs> oh, whatever. whatever. <laughs> and how much do you want to bet this lady's going to show up to the appointment? Love the, love the little Michael. one. Michael's setting up a date. <laughs> Farmington. Yep. Uh, Vacaville. How do you say that? Vacaville. Vacaville. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's like, how about I just show up personally? Is that okay? Coming on. They're coming on Friday, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, is your what's your Saturday like? Um, or do you want me to call? Saturday. Can we? Can we? Can we shoot for Monday? Yeah, that works. Sorry, we've got we've got like uh, grandkids and like six softball games. You're totally fine. And just a few more questions, okay? Your your average bill is it over hundred bucks, over two hundred, or? How um, yeah, you? my I think my the, the last PPE bill was um, one forty. Okay, you got a pretty pretty big bill. It's not too crazy. Um, and then your no, roof tech, your roof tech is that a tile flat roof? No, um, no. I don't know what you call it. A roof. Um, <laughs> like the clay tile, like those little shingles. No, it's it's definitely not clay tile. It's, it's shingles. Shingles. Okay, I'll do probably yeah. probably concrete then. Um, and then shading wise, you have a lot of shading at your home, or or what is None. it? None. Zip that's, zero. That's good yeah. and bad. It's good for <laughs> yeah. when it's hot, but yeah. Anyway. And then let's see, I mean, the credit score is that over 650. You don't need to tell me exactly. But... Um, I think we're, uh, I want to say I'm close to 800 and my husband's 750. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I'm going to just put a note that you have someone coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, or Friday, I'm say, not tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I mean, if it is done run, we do the only thing we that's the only thing we do differently. We're obviously we're, all companies are different. Um, they focus a lot on leases. We do a lot of uh, you purchasing the system. You have no money out of pocket or anything, but it's kind of it's kind of the same idea. But it's them, you're leasing the equipment from them. Us, you're we're giving it to you. So got it. Say you want to, say you want to sell your home ever. Uh, it's a lot easier to kind of wrap it up the end of the loan, and then it goes with okay. the, it goes with the home, and then they have no power. I mean, they'll have to sit on the power bill. Basically, when they my my system's spazzing out my computers for some reason. But just heads up, so everybody knows, if they're at Costco, they're looking at a purchase. Um, otherwise, you can almost guarantee if it wasn't through Costco, it's a lease. So just something to to know about. Okay, I was lying. Say that again. Let me make sure I'm clear. If it's at Costco, they're doing the. It is Sunrun, but it's a purchase. But if it's Sunrun. But not from Costco, it'll be a lease. Is that what you said? 90% of the time. Not every single time because Sunrun does have purchase options. You just, you never see it. Um, Costco is exclusively purchase. Um, and the pricing is not that great. Like I, I have a buddy who just sent me a quote uh, last night, actually, um, from Costco. And it's, we will beat their pricing with better equipment, right? Um, so you can feel very, very, very confident telling them that. Just be like, look, I shop at Costco too. Um, Sunrun's a great company. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying we're better. You never want to bash another company. Keep playing that though, so you guys can hear it all the way through. Um, That's awesome. But then a lease uh, that you have that you have to buy it out before you sell the home, or, or they have Got to. Like, okay. So that's just a little tidbit for you. Um, and let that's, me, that's a good tidbit. I know it is, and that's why I always like Sunrun was trying to hire me to go work with them, and I was like, all you do is leases, though, and I can't, I can't do it if I don't believe in the product. So 
That's why I went with the company I'm with, and we're with a company called Power. Um, you're gonna get an Power. Email. Okay. You're gonna get a text okay. and just like a confirmation for Monday. Um, let's see, that is the 11th. Uh, do you think nighttime or daytime? Or what works best for you? Um, it'll have to be after five. Okay. Because we what? both we both work until so it. I'm not home until five thirty, but I get out of here at five. Okay. Should we shoot for six or six thirty? Uh, let's shoot for six thirty. Okay. Do that. And if anything In case changes, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you not want an angry Cheryl on the phone. With me. <laughs> you don't want that to go. Okay. Um. Yeah. You're gonna get a text right now. That's just me confirmation. Um. And let me send this. Let me know you got it. Let me show you good. Either way, this is the best piece you can do. Yes, it is. Okay. That's all we have. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, so you got you should get an email and you get you should get a text and that's just confirmation. And then on Monday, um, I'll just kind of text you the hours before, see if everything's good. And then even if you're like, you know what, we don't want to talk to you, just let me know, just so I kind of know. Okay. Yeah. But Absolutely. I hope you have a good rest of your day, Cheryl. With an ask. You too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Amazing call, A plus. So I'm sure you guys kind of picked up a couple. I guess she's at six thirty. I thought she was at six. Yeah, good thing we listened to that. <laughs> we got we got to make sure Cheryl eats. But That's awesome. Was I, everybody able to kind of take some stuff away from that? The tone, the pace, the all of that was really really good. Cool. Yeah, I just want to also reiterate, um, at the end there, what he did is a huge difference between um, someone showing up and not showing up, is what he did there at the end, which is sitting there, making sure that she receives the text message. First of all, just letting her know that she's going to receive one, um, but also being like, did you get it? Did you get it? Even if I, I couldn't tell if she received it or not, but um, making sure that she was aware that she's going to get a text. And she has been texting through the system. Um, so that is huge, 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 huge. Um, Michael, did you see her text? So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check your CRM. Uh, she texted in. Um, but yeah, that was uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. If you're going to go in and um, book an appointment that's after someone else is going to be there, you have to make sure that you give them a reason to not close with those people. Um, so that's what he was doing there also is um, if you know show, someone's showing up and we're not getting in there before them, we're getting in there after them, you have to give them a very good reason to not sign because they're going to be sitting with someone and they're going to be pressuring the hell out of them to sign on the dotted line and they will not get off the phone until they sign. So you have Especially to give them in-home. Really I, I think this was an in-home. So those yeah. people... The, the in-home closers, they can be very high pressure closers. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of that. Yep. So give them a good reason to wait. Uh, come up with that with whatever you got, <laughs> like Mike did. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, cool. Although I, um, although I did notice that like some other companies, like I don't know if you guys have heard, I'm pretty sure you heard of Legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out there like a brokerage company. Their, their, their tactic is to wear the people out with numbers and it's very like nerve wracking. And I've talked to a, a few people that we've already spoken to and set proposals with, and they haven't gone through yet, but they're going to stay with us simply because of how simple we made the process, which is nice to know. Yeah, absolutely. Something Paul's been doing really well. Like I guarantee you, because you keep on, on top of people that we pitched that maybe it wasn't the right time. Because it isn't always the right time for people, um, even if we think it is, right? But if you keep on top of those people, you keep in contact with those people, when they want to go solar one month later or two months later, because we're about to start getting our, our summer electric bills, mm -hmm. you know, and in California, that's usually like a two, three hundred dollar swing, right? Where they were paying a hundred bucks, they didn't really feel it. And now I guarantee if Paul hits them up when they have a three hundred and fifty dollar bill, four hundred dollar bill, they're going to feel a lot different about how, how urgent it is to get solar. So keep reaching out to those old customers. 
um, because in the next what, two months, Don, we're, we're going to, they're going to have a very different build than they've had for the last couple. Absolutely. Um, does anybody else have any questions for the, uh, the killers that we put on showcase here tonight? <laughs> We're going to wrap this I up. I have one quick question. This is kind of general. Uh, has California had a big rate increases that hit the news recently? 20%. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty percent. When I'm talking to people, I'm like, I, if, I don't know if you realize, but you, your bill is going up 20% over what you think it is right now. And that's this year. Next year, they've already proposed another 20% rate increase. And that's just next year. We're not talking about five years down the road, 10 years down the road. Like if you're paying $300 a month right now, even $200 a month, you're talking, you're going from 200 to 300 in, in a year from now, like next summer, this time you're paying $100 more average a month. And that's before they do future rate increases. And at the same time, they're trying to cut solar off. Like they are truly attacking solar in a way that they've never, they've, they've never attacked it before, right? Like net metering 3.0, if it wasn't for how that went public and how kind of the solar industry rallied around that, that would have gone through. Yep. Yeah, so there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of, you guys have a lot of ammunition. You should be able to have these conversations extremely confidently because it, we're like Robin Hood over here, you know, it's, it's like that. It's legit. Um, so we're going to, uh, any other questions before uh, I'm going to go through one more little thing and then wrap up here. All good. Okay. I haven't used this before on this angle. Let me see if this works better. Nope. Okay. Um, so I just want to run through this with you guys so you, um, you have a picture of this. So um, you, oh shoot. you have your um, booking and then you have your sit rate. And then you have your uh, basically like proposal which is your pitch or your second sit. Um, and then you have your close. And then you have install. So if you're at say, um, say you book 100, 100 appointments, if your sit rate is meaning, let's say 50%, 50% of them show, right? then you're at 50 and then uh, then you're you know doing your um, your discovery call here and then your second show up rate is say 50% again you got 25 um, and let's say your uh, close rate is 25% uh, was that four was a quarter of 25 four and a half, five, six, call it six. Uh, and then your install, you don't have a ton of control over this, but you do have control over it. So you might install say five. Um, you probably have, maybe install four out of that. Um, I wanna show you what increasing your sit rate does so if you just move this to 60 percent oh and then if you close five deals your average deal is 7200 five times 7200 let's work from uh closes instead of installs so six times 7200 is $43,000. Okay. Let's say you simply increase your sit rate 
you're doing the same work, the exact same work, same amount of time. You just add a little something like what Mike did at the end, which is say, hey, uh, I'm gonna, you're gonna receive an email and a text right now. Um, if, if you don't see the email, it's okay, check it later, check your junk box, um, you'll see it in there. Um, but I wanna make sure you got this text. Did you get it? Yeah, awesome, cool. That one little thing, let's say got you, um, you know, uh, six out of every 10 instead of five out of every 10. Can everybody see that being possible? That six people show up to their uh, discovery call instead of five because of that one little adjustment? 60% would be 66, then 30, and then... Uh, This is 6.25, uh, then 30, 7.5. So you went from, I'm gonna redo this number, 6.25 times 7,200. equals 45,000, 7.5 times 7,200 Who would like to make 9,000 more dollars spending the exact same amount of time, spending no additional effort. You just change the way you do it just a little bit and you increase your show rate from 50% to 60%. You did all the same work with no improvements after that. This is the only thing that you changed. You only got better at one little thing. Same amount of time, same amount of effort not changing anything else, you made $9,000 more. Was everybody aware of how these numbers work like this? And because they're percentages, this is like, um, these aren't linear. So if you increase your, um, if you increased your sit rate here and increase increased your uh, close rate, just a couple more percent, that is compounded. So it's, it wouldn't be a $9,000 increase or even a nine plus nine, it's multiplied. It's, it's a massive change. So what I'm saying is you wanna turn these dials, just get a little better, a little better, get a little better at getting your sit rate up, get a little better at uh, when you get there, your proposal rate going up. Uh, get a little better at closing your deals. These little tiny increments make a gigantic difference. Um, and so you guys are going to be in control of, of your show rate um, with these warm transfers, which we'll talk about next week. Um, when you are booking these appointments and it's appointment time, you'll be calling them to make sure that they're there and then patching them into someone. Um, this will give you plenty of feedback for yourself on uh, how, how these are going and what you can do to adjust this. Um, so does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Is that shocking to anybody? Uh, yes. Are you kidding me? $9,000, that's more than like most people make in two to three months. Yeah, that's shocking. Uh, not, not shocking, exciting. That too. <laughs> it's uh, shelf shocking. Yes. <laughs> Good. And an I try. Another thing, keep on top of your, your appointments, guys. Like Brett does a really good job of that where he's constantly, you know, what's going on with this? What's going on with this? <clears throat> and he's reaching out himself. Just keep on top of it. Don't feel bad asking us what's happening. Um, you know, we're, we're getting to this point now. And I know Don feels the same way. I know Jeff feels the same way. 
we're starting to build up like a huge pipeline um, with, with all of your guys' appointments. So it's a lot easier for you guys to keep track of it um, and to push us to make sure we give them an extra call or you're giving them an extra call. Um, we, we just need to make sure we work together on this. Um, and like I said, don't feel bad asking us what's happening with the appointments. Because uh, yep. it's only going to help everybody. <clears throat> and hey, Pat, good to see you here. Um, I'm recording this so I can send you the first, uh, the first half, but good to see you, sir. Um, any, any questions, any uh, realizations uh, that, that came from any of this? I just want to add something. I had a little realization, you know, that little demonstration you did with the numbers there, Don, um, you know, really kind of showcases that, you know, there is sort of a science to this and an art at the same time. You know what I mean? So I think Michael showed us a little bit about the art, you know, of like conversation and, you know, and getting to know people and building relationships. Don showed us a little bit of the science uh, behind it. And, you know, when you, I think when you can combine the two together and just make these subtle changes, you know, that's, that's the art of incorporating the science into your deal. So that's, that's, that's the realization that I came up with is that sometimes it's just, it, it is studying and it's making, it's like golf, right? You know, if you just move your hand just a little bit on that golf club, you're going to hit the ball all different. So it's just these little tiny things that have a big impact. So I really took that out of this today. And uh, thanks for making that connection. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great connection to make. Um, and I'll say like, you know, if, if one of you is taking a hundred calls to book, um, you know, two appointments and someone else has taken a hundred calls, um, and booking five, um, you know, call each other and be like, you know, at, ask people questions or we're, when we're in this and you hear a number that someone threw out, um, cause everybody kind of in our nightcaps, they'll be like, I went through a hundred calls tonight, um, if, if you see your number is quite a bit different than someone else's, ask questions, you know, be like, hey, but what I want to bring you to your attention through this is I know you're not, you guys aren't carrying this from proposal to close to install, but I want to show you, these are numbers I have always tracked from the second I got into this industry. Um, it's probably because I'm an engineer and this is, you know, this is like my nature. I have to do stuff like this, but I do this so I can see when I run into someone that's like, Hey, my close rate is this. And my, if my close rate is lower, I'm like, I have a bunch of questions for you. <laughs> Let me ask you a bunch of stuff. Cause I want to know how to increase. I understand what these little percentages do to my pocketbook. These little percentages are a huge difference in my pocketbook. So this is the difference between the people that make a ton of money and don't make a ton of money. It's the people that make a ton of money they are obsessed with these metrics because these metrics paint a picture. And if, if you guys know, understand your metrics, then it's really easy to help you. Um, and you can help yourself. You don't even need people to help you. Um, if you ask questions, how do I get better? I have no idea. I have no idea how to tell you to get better. Uh, but if you're like, um, I, every hundred calls, I book two appointments and I notice. Mike out of every hundred calls books, eight appointments. Uh, then, then there's something to work with there, right? Um, how do I get better? Well, if I don't know that first piece of information, who knows? <laughs> I'd like, I'd have to listen to every single one of your calls and that might take me 10 hours, right? That's the only other way I could tell. Um, so figure out what your metrics are. Um, and maybe GP and I will um, jump on together and uh, figure out like what are what are our ideal metrics. But start think start putting your gears going on this concept of metrics uh, because this metrics paint a picture, and there is an art to this. Just like you said, Jason, there is an art to this for sure. Um, but if you know your numbers, at, like you can smoke anybody that is gifted in the art. You can smoke them all day long. If you know your metrics and just apply numbers, it's called Sinaloa. Do you, do you, do you by chance have a, uh, have you made any uh, great spreadsheets for tracking that kind of stuff? Is anybody out there, have they gone that far to do that? Oh yeah. I mean, for sales, that's, 
I live in spreadsheets like that. <laughs> um, and in the CRM, once you guys get into the sales seat, um, this is all, uh, this is in a CRM where you track all this. I've automated all of it. Um, but in the, in the call center role, you're going to have to track your own metrics. Um, uh, but yeah, create a spreadsheet for sure. And every day, GP, could you, do you happen to? I have everybody's metrics actually okay. from uh, like when they started and everything, but you guys, like what you should start doing, I'm not going to give you guys access because it'll turn into a whole attic. Um, <laughs> but you guys should start to track your own metrics, right? You should, you know, every call block, go ahead and put how many calls you've taken, how many, um, you know, people have said not interested to you, how many appointments you're booking. Um, I think you even have your average talk time visible to you. You, you have a lot of stuff available. You know, so track your own. I, I just want to say one thing about that. Like last month, uh, Don kind of pointed this out about tracking numbers and all that, all that stuff. And so I had a goal of like, okay, I'm going to do 28 appointments. That was my goal to get 28 appointments a month. And instead of me just being like, okay, 28 appointments, what is that? So I try to figure out, okay, let's say 60 calls is an appointment of 70. So now I'm like, okay, how many calls do I have to do? So I literally put it on my dry erase board at home. And that was my goal. And like, and, and I feel like that is one thing, like John was saying, well, I don't know how to make you better. I feel like that is one thing that got me better is just making a ton of calls and messing up and just, just going, you know, I feel like that's the only way you're going to get better. But me tracking my metrics, like you were saying, is like, I don't know my clothes right yet, but I know me starting out with those first things is going to, it's going to get that much better. So I firmly believe in what you just. Yes. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't have said it better. And it brought me back to when I was knocking doors uh, because I tracked this stuff so much and I understood I had a goal. Here's my income goal. And because I knew my metrics, I could break it all the way down to here's how many doors I need to knock. I need to knock 5,000 doors to put this much money in my bank account. It's math. It's math. Once you know your metrics and you, you're not going to get any worse, all you have to do is not, I knew I had to knock 5,000 doors to put this amount of money in my bank account. Now, I don't give a shit if someone says no. I don't care. You're one of my 5,000 doors i need to knock that's all it is right and like well and that's, no that's kind of what oh sorry sorry you said the whole ebbs and flow thing is like when you have a bad day like it's very easy to get down on yourself but i just look at my okay how many calls did i make am i getting my numbers yes i'm getting them so then the next day i'll book two appointments you know and it's always back and forth so i think just focusing on i'm gonna make this many calls because that's how many i need and then the numbers will work themselves out that's why I talk to 50 girls each day and get shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew Steve was going to chime in there. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I get shut down 48 times. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Great. Well, that's all we got for you guys. Uh, if you uh, have any questions or want to stay on, uh, we'll hang out here for a couple minutes. Otherwise, it is a wrap. And we will see you tomorrow. I'm just curious, G, uh, GP, any word on our friends in California? Our friends, the...